something that was really hard to get my head around when I first started using a Fraser was just how different it was to injectable insulin. So much so that for the first couple of weeks, I felt like I got a bad batch and that it was barely working at all. When I used injectable insulin, I used to use something called the insulin to carb ratio, which is a ratio designed to, to work out how much insulin you should have from any meal with carbohydrates or really any meal at all. But it seems like no matter how hard you try with a Fraser, insulin to carb ratios just do not work. And the more I used a Fraser and the more research I did, the more how a Fraser works began to make sense to me. And it gains most of its effect from simulating something called the first phase response of insulin of a non-diabetic. But this just doesn't happen when you use injectable insulin. Now the green dose, which according to the pack is supposed to somehow be equivalent to eight units of injected insulin, is nothing like eight units of injected insulin. And the blue cartridge is nothing like four units, like the packaging claims. If I take a green dose, which again is equivalent to about eight units, they say, on an empty stomach, it'll lower my blood sugar levels by about the same as two to three units of Humalog or a Pidra would, but nowhere near the same amount as eight units of Humalog or a Pidra would. This represents the second phase response to insulin, as seen here in the graph, which acts on glucose levels that are already circulating in the blood. And because a Fraser has a much smaller second phase action when compared here to Humalog, you need much higher doses of it to lower blood glucose levels, as I guess some frustrated people online have discovered. However, I think this is actually a good thing because it minimizes the risk of dangerous hypoglycemia. But I think uh, what makes a Fraser remarkable is the first phase insulin response that I mentioned earlier. This first phase response is triggered when a five minute extra strong burst of insulin occurs in a non-diabetic. And this first phase is represented here in this graph in the very sharp peak at the start of the graph. The inhaled dose of a Fraser perfectly replicates this extra strong burst and quickly dissipates before it has a chance to lower blood glucose levels. But that happens in the second phase I just mentioned. And this brief burst of insulin, or the first phase, is the natural signal to the liver to stop releasing glucose while eating for about 90 minutes. And this prevents glucose levels from rising while eating, which you could see in the extreme Coke challenge that I did earlier, and that perfectly demonstrates that. So to put it another way, a Fraser stops blood glucose levels rising in the first place when eating, whereas with injectable insulin, blood glucose levels rise and then are lowered by the insulin later on. And once I got my head around this, using a Fraza made so much more sense and became so much easier. Blocking this release of glucose accounts for most of the effects of a Fraza and makes comparing it to doses of injectable insulin really difficult and pretty much useless. I'd suggest to Sanofi for the international release of a Fraza that you ditch the 4, 8 and recently released 12 unit labeling of the doses and change it to something more simple, like a small, medium, and large, because while it might seem useful to draw a parallel or a comparison to other units of insulin, it really isn't. It does more harm than good and makes it way more confusing than it needs to be. Thanks for watching, guys.